All right, let's do a uh, belt drive conversion on this uh, MX650 here. Uh, you can see it's pretty much uh, stock, uh, pretty dirty as well. Let's get started. So this is what you're gonna have in your kit. You're gonna get a belt, a couple of pulleys, a front and rear, um, some countersunk uh, bolts, as well as some locking uh, stainless steel nuts. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, I found a left-handed um, stainless steel nylon nut um, to replace the old crummy one. Uh, let me know if you're interested in it. I, I can uh, make it an optional item in the kit. Uh, here are some tools you might need. Um, Phillips, some wrenches. This is optional. This is a Cricut. It's uh, pretty good at determining uh, proper belt tension. We've got a 10 mil wrench, uh, 12 mil hex uh, to get the um, the reverse threaded nut off the motor. Um, we got a five or a four and a five uh, mil. Um, Allen key, whatever you want to call them, and uh, angle grinder to uh, get the chain tensioner off, and that should do it. So let's get started. And uh, you don't need uh, this. This is just for convenience. Uh, it's a uh, what do they call these? An impact driver uh, for bolts. Anyways, that's optional. You can get along just fine with those. So let's start by getting that back tire off. It is a 19 mil and I like to use this to kind of lock onto it and just back her out. There we go. I like to leave it on just a little bit and you can uh, you can try to drop her down but the chain's holding her in pretty good, so let's go ahead and remove the chain guard, just the Phillips. And I don't think we're going to be putting this back on, so feel free to get rid of it. These, careful, the plastic screws will pop a tire if you just throw them willy-nilly, so I like to get rid of them proper. Okay, so that's that. Let's just unhook it from the motor, if we can. And this is a one-tired chain. Okay, let's actually do this next. So we got our 5 mil here and then our 10 mil. Just kind of go from underneath, find where the nut is and hook it on there. Careful, that can happen. And I think, there we go. Since we're not using these again, it doesn't matter. Uh, rule of thumb is if you flatten these, that's bad. Um, but we don't really care to use them again. The flat ones I just tossed. Um, but if you want to avoid flattening them, you could start by backing one out just a little bit, then move into the next one, backing that out a little bit, and then backing them out all the way, and see how that gets removed a lot easier. We won't be using those, um, so keep them for spare M6 bolts and nuts, whatever you want. Pop off the old sprocket, and then if you want, you can clean it. Um, I like to keep things around my belt clean, so why not? There is a lot of shit. May not actually clean up well. You'll find out soon enough that one day you'll probably just end up welding your free wheel. So, I'm just kind of tidying up around the bearing. The bearing's handy to keep clean. And the rest is caked on there pretty good. And 
I don't know if I care too much. Um, if you clean around the outside, it can help the belt go on just a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then call the rest good. So the belt's got pretty tight tolerances. Or the, <laughs> the pulley that's going to go along the rear has pretty tight tolerances. And it sh cleaning this should help it go on a little bit easier and to ensure that it's more center. Okay, good enough. Yeah, it's not coming off. All right, next we get the uh, rear pulley uh, put on. There we go. Nice and easy. Get your four countersunk bolts. And they should go in nice and smooth like that. And now we grab a nut. And just kind of start it. Uh, it's quite dirty under there too. Oh well. The uh, since you don't have to keep oiling your chain anymore, the belt will won't have any oil that's flung everywhere, so it should help keep this a lot cleaner. Okay, last one, and then we'll get to actually tightening. And an import, important thing here is to make sure that the nuts, um, when you tighten them, some some razors have something that sticks up that makes uh, makes it so when you put the nuts down, they go on, uh, they catch on something, and then they can make this bolt be a little crooked. So the way I found to get around that is to just make sure that these are down and flat and not crooked. I don't even know if I can make it crooked, but you get the point. So make sure that they're flat and then start tightening. So what I like to do, that's a four, not a five. I like to just barely get them in. So basically the nut just barely touches the top. There we go, not too tight. And it's like tightening uh, bolts on your car tire. Kind of go in a cross pattern. See, just a little bit. And then we'll come back around and get them all the way tight. This last one we do all the way. Oops. Okay. There we go. And then do the one across for a minute. And do the one next to it. And there we go. Feel free to check them once more. Make sure they're all snug if you want. I've done this a few times, so uh, I got a sense for it. But just make sure that the nuts on the bottom aren't loose. You can't move them one way or the other. Okay, that's the rear pulley, and the front pulley. So this one, what we gotta do is get rid of this stupid chain tensioner. Now you could try, oops, that might be, you could try to get rid of that, but I find that most of the time it doesn't even work. So I just go right to uh, angle grinding. Make sure you wear your proper protection, unlike me. And just kind of go in there and, you know, as close as you want. I don't get too close. I kind of just go right, right on that side of the spring for the easiest way. Yeah, in case you didn't see it, I kind of cut right on that side of the spring.
Okay, there she is. And watch out, she's gonna be hot. Careful what you grab. Is this seat in the way? I hope not. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so. Right there. Don't need that anymore. Okay, next is you can clean up if you want, whatever, I don't care. Um, and actually, I believe this one is dead, so let me get the charger real quick. Get it charging while we're doing this so it can be at least ready to show you that it works. Okay, so next we got to deal with a reverse threaded nut. So, why don't I make that into the tightening position and then I got lucky, but you may need to hold this down with like a vise or something. Um, and I don't really like those. And then the tricky part is how you get it off, right? I don't know. But since we're not going to use it again, how about that? Okay, again, might be a good time to wipe things down. Didn't even know they came with a washer. That's funny. Well, not gonna work with my system, so make sure you get rid of your washer as well. Not all that useful in my opinion. But I guess it's so they can use standard sprocket sizes or something, I don't know. I never actually used the washer when I got mine. Okay, uh, now we can go ahead and put this on. So you can see there's a, a double D bore. So the flat sides match up with the flat sides here. And just kind of slide her in. It's pretty tight fit. I think, yeah, it looks like it's going on. And then, so I like to use this nylon locking one which is a 13. And you'll notice that we got threads here, which I'll show you later. It's great for removing old pulleys if you ever need to. So, oh, important part. Let's go ahead and get this belt on so we don't forget. And what's handy is if you grab it like so, while you're tightening this. Oops, gotta actually get it on, huh? Or you gotta make it go the right way. Okay. So yeah, you just kind of grab this. And then as you're going, it should move, so just... There we go. There we go. And we're on. And you can spin it if you want to try to make sure it's even, but whatever. And there we go. If you ever hear this noise, by the way, it means your belt is not tight enough. So you want to take a look at that. Don't ignore it. Otherwise, you'll end up with broken belts and components and you don't want that okay i think that's pretty much it so we just got to get this bad boy back on there we go and if you kept your bolts on 
should be already in uh, the correct order. So it basically goes in between these two washers. And it looks like mine's missing a washer. That's cool. All right. Then just kind of slide her on. Make sure you get inside the, uh, the brake. And then what I like to do is set it on its wheel. It's important that it's not crooked in any way, so try to wiggle it back and forth, make sure it's down. Then once it's down, go ahead and tighten it up. Okay. And that's it. So, next, you just go ahead and put your belt on. I like to start with the front and then um, go along the top of the rear here and then just kind of go backwards. And then as you're going backwards, make sure that your belt isn't like this because if you try to put it on like that it's going to be a uh, bad time so go ahead and reverse it there and you're good to go all right and that's it well actually not it i lied uh you want to check your belt tension so if you've got a lot of amps you're pushing through your motor you're going to want a tighter belt uh closer to 50 to 70 uh, if you're pushing like let's say 100, 120 amps. For a stock motor, this is a 20, you know, you're not pushing much. Uh, the bigger your front pulley is, also the more amps you can push. But for this, you know, 20 is good. Stock motor, more than plenty. And as you go around to, it'll, uh, it'll potentially change the tension because of the Chinese tolerances, like the the flywheel not being exactly center or whatever, but should be good enough. If you're pushing over 120 battery amps or close to 100 battery amps at 72 volts, then maybe send me a message, uh, an email, and uh, we can talk about. Oh, it looks like, oh, that's what was making the noise. Yeah, it's rubbing. Okay, make sure your, uh, your chain bash thingy isn't digging into it. Let's see if we can remedy that situation. There we go, much better. Poor pulley. It was beautiful. Anyways, um, but yeah, I like to check it in a few different areas because Chinese uh, Razor bikes don't have the best tolerances, but you know, they're still pretty fun. So we're about 20, that's good enough for stock uh, amps. Let's give it a shot. It'll work when it's charging. That's what it is, okay. So here we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh man. Okay, but the belt and the pulleys are nice. And good tolerances, symmetrical, etc. So let's go ahead and go through it and see how loud it is as you go faster. When you're going slow, it's basically silent. Yeah, it's like the free wheel's louder. Cool. Well, that's it. Let me know again if you want that that left-handed uh, nut. I can start offering it as an option. Hopefully you like it. Okay. We got a uh, stock RSF right here with my uh, belt kit on it. Let's see how it goes. Huh. 
Oh yeah. Needs a better fork for sure. It's got a good amount of pep compared to stock. It's got about the same torque as stock with uh, this setup, I'd say. But no maintenance and quiet. Should have took a before and after for the sound, but it's noticeably quieter. God, I hate these brakes. I have to get some zoom brakes on here. See if you can hear it. She's nice.